Here we go. Shadow Mirror. John Cena, I've mostly seen him play Pure Shadow, so there's a good chance we get a Pure Shadow into a Lost Souls matchup here. Neither of them choosing to take the first value here, so one you can defend, but you lose a bit of map control, so they chose to go for more map control oriented options. A Nox Trooper, alright. That's rather um, uncommon. And the Shadow Mirror. You can use the ability of the Nox to snipe out of that charger so he can't retreat, but you lose out a lot of damage because you will motivate your for second spam at some point. And the Nox obviously isn't affected by that. Oh, by the way, if the in-game sound or my voice or anything is not working properly, give me a heads up. Second well, and John Cena decides to push in. He doesn't really have many more units played. He's not nasty, but he should finish them off. Oh, he ran out of energy for the Nox Overcharge by playing the Dread Charger. So, the Dread Charger lives. Yeah, right now, John Cena, one way down, but with a way higher unit count. He mass frenzy. This should destroy the well. Cutting it close here. Ah, the frenzy animation took so long. Ah, and the well lives. What is directly moving in again? The well is repaired, but right now, Nick really shouldn't have any energy. But John has to spawn death units, and they are really, really easy to finish off, as you can see here. Ah, he doesn't focus them. He goes for the frenzied one. It's fine. Yeah, this doesn't look like he has enough left to really, really take down a well. This is an immense lead for Nick. He continues to spawn death units, but as you can see, the um the frenzy for seconds in the quick work of them, so <laughs> Cancels the ability, takes the higher HP one. Reasonable choice. John Cena takes a second well here, but as you can see, this well already has paid off 90 energy. So, very big lead for Nick. So yeah, one well lead for Nick, 90 energy lead from the one power well. And a Shadow Frost against Shadow Match. I chose to take the close well, maybe to leverage his lead, we will see. 
Right now they should be at around even energy levels. Because he has the one extra well. So he has to defend here with even power. Yeah, well, he doesn't really have any trouble here. Yeah, that was a pretty nice one. He took out the Nightcrawler and finished off even more energy. Okay, I don't know why he destroyed those. Sort of. That was like six units. Okay, so this one will blow up with a very strong nasty. If it would survive. With the um, but. Well, it's dead. Yeah, I don't know about that one. That just that costs like 100 power, and he killed 50 and got a bit of damage. So obviously, being in the offense allows him to immediately frenzy nightcrawlers and use dark of assassin abilities more actively. Yeah, I like this. This was a really, really nice corpse explosion. But the day's Nightcrawler is a bit um, ambitious, I think. If he could frostbite it, he could just kill it right now. But I don't think he has it in. And he actually took another well, so... He's, a, he's up by a lot at this point. Yeah, the dazed uh, Dark of Assassins directly. Ah, <laughs> they actually survived. Okay, this is very, very risky if you spawn a dazed Nightcrawler. Um, Dark of Assassin next to another Shadow player. A lot of corpses here again. That's gonna be a corpse explosion, isn't it? Ah, uh, the Nightcrawler already ran out. Still... Decent. But he's just so far behind because of two L's. What do you wish of the Shadow this one already... Like, 60 energy out of it. This one, over 100. Nick really doesn't have to be efficient right now. A Reaver, alright. Actually wants to push at tier 2. You often see Nostal's just turtling onto tier 3. Yeah, it is a nasty. Deals a lot of damage to be well. And he just has the power. Immediately he plays the second one because he can. Not because he needs to, obviously. He could just go tier 4. It's gonna nasty, I guess. E harvester. So I think Nick doesn't have frostbite because he would have used it up here. Which makes this a bit more exciting. But he got the freeze in inside the aura. That's very, very big. Maybe John can nether bop him out of here? Okay. Never mind, that's too late. Adds a lot of energy. <laughs> nice game. Okay, they have to choose the second map. It will take a moment. Yeah. Alright, it's gonna be a meal.
Yeah, I think I'm bugged. I think I have to restart. One moment. Yeah, game crashed. One second. Let me just quickly show my email address to everyone. All right, crash for everyone. So Let's see if we can fix this. Here we go. All right. Second game, Nick is up 1 0. Okay, so the most important <laughs> thing you have to know right now this wall is worth 75 energy. So by destroying the players, get a huge power boost compared to other maps. Alright, this time no Nox Trooper by John. Simply choosing to spam for seconds. <laughs> Thank you, Ultra Cool. A nice option. So yeah, the usual build up. One thing to keep note of, I'm not sure if you can see it in the stream, but there is a score matter up here, which lets you easily guess or see how much energy you have invested in units. Do not overcome it compared to your opponent. Alright, first power well. I could try to rush this, but at the um, this high unit count, uh, it gets a bit harder. So many players would rather choose the the even option and just take a well. So right now, this tier two is to the left bit far off and Nick immediately pressures so it's very hard for him to actually move up to the left and take the monument which makes his tier 2 timing way later actually suicides the dread charger that's rough yeah the the nasty of of Nick led to his tier 1 being really scary for John because if he wouldn't have invested anything here, he could have just destroyed the well. So, John really can't go to 2 right now. 
it's like it started right now, so it's like 25 seconds off, and there are already two night crawlers in his base. He's trying to counter attack here. But this power will drop for sure against Double Frenzy Nightcrawlers. It's working fine for me, self made. So yeah, tier 2 with pretty big advantage for Nick already. As you can see this well already has like 25 power more than the one John Cena had. And he destroyed the well, so he's up by a large margin. And now he's just extending his lead by immediately buying, buying um, a building power wells and John can't really follow up as quickly so he always gets a bit of power lead whenever John can't build him at the same time Alright, he stopped swimming wells and just went for the way kill. Um, in that of case it's a decent air counter, but also he has an aura where nobody can attack when he activates it. But Nick has split up nicely to avoid that. And the power well goes down, so... Nick has a huge advantage right now. John has a bit of a tempo lead right now because he killed a lot of stun of units. But this nasty surprise just cleaned house. Yeah, there we go. Let's match to a gun. Game. That's this best of three. Alright, let's see what games we have available. No, oh, bloody impossibly, maybe. Where's bloody ad?
All right, we're gonna see bloody against impossible. Ah, okay, radical, already got it. In that case... I should look for another game. What is Toggy up to? Where is Toggy going? We should watch Toggy. Or maybe Nick is not done yet. I mean, it's sad I would watch Bika Gurka play, and he will play against Nick, so... Okay, Zima in for a spectator of Zima. Alright, let me invite them. <laughs> they already have a lobby open. Yeah, that's confusing, right? Oh no. Okay. Hello, Miro. Surprising absolutely everyone, I hope. We are forsaken. Forsaken. And the nasty actually finishes off more for a second. I suppose they were still dazed. So... This is still fine for Nick. 
He traded 110 for 50 for 100 power. Only his dread charger is a bit worse for wear. But considering Goku is not getting aggressive right now, he can just heal back up. Ah, that's completely fine. Nick with the third wear. And the follow up by Goku with the same thing. So hopefully this is um, an exciting T3 game. Souls against Souls. Gregorius on both sides. Hearts beating fast. Gregory Hearts not beating at all. Stuff like that. Alright, tier 2 by Goka. And Nikothi. Tier 2. So this is um, a tier 2 that allows him to very easily multi-prong attack. Also, this is like a lot of map control. So if Goku wants to go to free, he only can go here. And if Nick plays around that, he could deny the to free spot at some point. Simply by like using a C2 units while swap by going to free to block this spot. Yeah, Nick with the seventh well overall. That's a lot of those units. He most likely is pretty low on energy, considering he's currently up one way. And Big Goku is investing in this attack quite heavily. So if Nick can hold on here, he will have a size of lead. Oh, he actually has frostbite in right now. Alright, that's great. Yeah, double night crawlers are actually very strong DPS wise. So they kind of work as a makeshift large counter. Frenzy just destroys the units here. And with that, Nick has already uh, 45 energy lead. <laughs> Takes another power because um, Goku already followed up, up. So, yeah, that's how you snowball again by doing absolutely nothing. Both at eight wells at this point. That's how soul mirrors are supposed to go. So what would be cool right now is for him to like bait out units here or here, and by that going to free here, so his opponent wouldn't have a chance to go to free. But instead, he just chooses to quickly grab his to free. So purely from a macro perspective, this is still favorable for, for Nick. His tier 3 is way earlier. And this main base here allows him to easily attack all, atta all sides. Yeah, this is this is um, a weird choice. <laughs> like one Ashbone could easily handle this. I don't think this is a good use of energy right now, but let's see if it pays off. Here we go, split attack I'm coming. Goku tosses to counter with Dark Elf Assassins, alright. So yeah, this is um, double frost against double shadow Tiffy, so we will probably see Cultus Nose against Time as well. There we go, Time is one. 
But yeah, he he's responding with Dark Assassins, so the Wild Dark Assassins um, are doing great here. Time this one Silverwind Lancer takes care of the Silverwind Ashbone. And we will see two free walling action, I suppose. Here we go, got a smart sign coming. A wall master, if you so say. Immediately frozen. And yeah, this one needs to run. <laughs> oh, seems like the Kultus master made quick work out of that tremor. Hey, Grigori, here we go. A beautiful card. It's a good buff, buff carrier because with its ability activated, it has pretty good DPS. Here we see Coldest Master in action. If he motivates this, it's gonna be great DPS wise. Grigori against Grigori. Ah, that's beautiful. So, as mentioned, this point allows them to easily split attack. The Ashburn going for the belts. This ability taunts nearby enemies and it, it stops them from using abilities. So the coldest monster walking in here is a problem, even frozen. The taunt should still be active. So neither of these units can use their abilities. That's cost them a lot. But at the same time, He's trying to split attack up here. Timeless one is doing a lot of work now. So what he could have done with Kultus Master, he just take like a close way and just spam the ability. Let's see if he chose to do that at some point. Love is getting quite low here and at the same time there is a Kultus Master split attack. And this is just insane DPS. So as we see Repairs are on cooldown right now, and he is heavily delaying into those wells. A nasty would kick, but it dies anyway. Very nice. There's a lot of going on here, so we will not see at all. The life deep gory. Applying heavy pressure. Actually takes out a well. He gets both here. So right now Nick is at 8 wells. And his opponent, opponent Bika Gurke is at 5. Coldest Master just obliterating Silverwind Lances. And here we go. I lost.
Oh my god, the booster. Uh, a revenant's blessing and a razor leaf. Amazing. All right, everyone ready? Fire tier one from Nick on Ilion. Against another shadow T1 from Big Kagoka. Fox coming in. Really hard unit for Shadow to deal with. Oh, that's 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 brave. And a quick nasty. These fucks will not come out of this. So yeah, Baker Google cleaned house here. That's very nice. App control is incredibly important on Ilion. There's basically no tier three option for anyone not holding the middle. So yeah, one well against one well. We can go go with the tempo advantage. We are forsaken. That's a ton of forsaken. Oh, and he walled him. <laughs> That's payback. Fuck scanning a lot of value here. If he has nature T2, he might be able to recover from this, but he will not be able to deal with this in tier 1. There we go, nature. But there's so much damage coming in right here, this well is down for sure. And if he frenzies, he might be, and splits against Hurricane, he might be able to get a second one here. But this is gonna be rough. Alright, the leaves. So, one for one at this point. I 
Let's see, it's never a lie. Yeah, he's alive. Very nice. Two pages of PvP. Yeah. That's rare. Okay, deciding game between Nick and Goka. Another round of Shadow Mirror. This time Goka aims for the early well and Nick trades like 5 energy for a bit of map control. Another Haladua standoff, the map is well known for. Vika Goku with the well and a two by Nick. So So he has to make something happen here. Oh, he will be at a disadvantage. So he gaps the power well, and this one has already ticked for 33 energy, so he's behind by like 40 energy at this point. Eka Goku has one unit less on the field right now, so he might be able to just get a quick lead with just spamming wells right now. Even wild situation. So yeah, Nick attacks, forces another unit, that's good. This slows down this well. 
So yeah, they are even at wells right now. Fingers. Since Baker Goku took this well, Nick would have need to move a unit up here to get the last well. But Baker Goku decides to pressure right now. I give okay. <laughs> the reaver. A bit scary for those dark elf assassins. Night guard, late to take over the river. But he doesn't want to take him, I guess, because he's already too low. Frostbite doing work. And the life retriever just gets nuked. I know he has a night guard he doesn't know what to do with. It blocks Nick out of playing a reaver, I guess. But it's still a lot of energy in a unit that doesn't do anything. Here we go, the power well. And for Nick to follow up with that, he would have to run up here, which would take a long time. So instead, he grabs tier 3. And that's a decent choice. Like, his units should win this. And this results in Goku either having to play more units. All taking a bit of damage here. Tier 3 timing is way later. And Haladuras, as you can see. Way better for Kultus usage as Sima E was. Very easy to get them in position. You have to use the ability though at some point. It's very good. There we go. Good trees here. But the first spell is already down. Timeless. So yeah, that's basically the problem with Timeless Bond against Coldest Master. Dark Elf Assassin's finally dying. So right now he rot rotates the ability usage. But another thing he can do is just ball up a high amount of Nightcrawlers. So the targeting with um, Timeless One abilities as problematic. There we go, Grigori. Right on the freeze here. Very late, so the monument takes a ton of damage. Attack of Ashbone on the other side. Timeless one should delay that. And now we have a Grigori against Grigori. And Goku got the taunt off. But Kultus Master support is coming in. Forty-three HP. 
The cultist master turns around and kills it. The dazed Ashbond just gets destroyed by Frostbite's Silver Winds. But the cultist masters keep on going. <laughs> the lost vigil, here we go. So let's see. If he has a tower, he like he needs Ice Barrier or something to trigger her passive. Without the passive, she's like kinda normal ranged, like a normal range unit. But when using the passive she can reach like 50 meters of range. Or you can just clip with it, that works too. Slow on the ability here. Snipes the timeless one. There's Gori gets taunted away. And together with the Nightcrawlers and Frostbite, he should melt. But the Lost Virgil didn't really achieve much. Ashbone seems to be a good unit. They are about to run out, but they would have still dealt a tremendous amount of damage, so I don't mind the freeze. Yeah, but besides that one very kick, there isn't much lost or gained so far. Because Gigoris trading and true Gigoris like they're supposed to. As you can see by the score, Nick has around 300 less score than Joker. This means that he's trading more efficiently and keeping more units alive, so... There should be an energy advantage he gets by that, but there's a point where it doesn't really matter, especially if you're on 7 to 8 rail bases, those small advantages really don't do a lot. And yeah, this is the kind of games Crosswell would win, and the reason we are not opposed to having the card in the game. I would just end these um, rather slow game. Um, attack to the main base by Gurkha. The first shield building, I think, from mid. I'm sure this night guard was intended to be played. So yeah, that's what Souls Mirrors look like without Crossbell. So he got the taunt in, so this Cultist Master can't use the ability anymore.
This seems easily won. This too seems to be defended. But Pika Goku obviously has reserves ready to go. I think I missed the monument drop. Yeah, I missed it. Sorry. <laughs> but it's going up here. So yeah, there's a pretty big tempo lead, I think. For Nick right now. But the defender's advantage with Tynus 1 is so huge. As you can see, like, Tannis one just getting three units like that. Backs out any kind of offensive capabilities. But the life weaved Gory seems to be a tr seems to be trouble for Nick. But the original is coming in. It seems like he doesn't have a building for her, so he can't actually use her to attack, which is a bit sad. The border guards fighting. Yeah, the aura of corruption is nice here, but the servant lances are taunted, so you can't get them out. Meaning the aura is fed. The damage is fed around all units here. And the well drops? Very nice. We also got the well here with the night crawlers, so Nick now has another angle to attack from. And there's 80 energy bound here doing nothing, which is a big disadvantage actually. Like that's a well kick, roughly. Just a ton of units flashing into that Grigori. Well, it's close to running out. The Armada has arrived. He could use this well to split attack into this, but there's <laughs> so much standing here already. Yeah, seems like he used them, so no, Nick is the one with the 60 energy bound for nothing. But if you can take this, it's gonna be rough for Ika Goku to get back to T3 in time. There's just so many units and the aura will not change this at all. Four Ash Bones hitting on this monument. This score is actually 1000 more for Nick. So. There we go, amazing Souls Mirror. But after 19 minutes, Nick takes it. 2 to 1. Yeah, a good amount of Gigori's play. That's what healthy gameplay looks like. Let's see.
Let's see what game we can cast. Maybe Bobolo went after all, and they're already in game. Hyper one against Pirate Bay, that's nice. Yeah, I'm gonna take a moment here to find a game, so... Yeah, right now it um, would take a moment to find a game because most people are already in the match. So give me a moment here. Okay, so. Radical will stream Dragon Logical, so I need to find another game. What are some on an impossible already in game? Okay, they're already playing Dodi more and impossible, that's good.
All right. I guess we will watch Afro Book against Popolo. That should be a nice one. Here we go. So yeah, Afro mostly plays Duncan. Ubalo, I think he's a bit more diverse. But I suppose it could just be pure fire. Cross start, fire start. Layout is a bit weird. Opening wells aren't super safe. I have two master archers. If you would stay in one, this scavenger could just bully you around. The energy levels are rising, so at some point we could get a well here. Of sets with one way. The scavengers would obviously win the engagement, but this close to the power well, like a light blade or more master archers, could ruin the day. But yeah, it's really not feasible for Afro Book to leave this position. At least as long as Uwalu doesn't take another well. So yeah, that's a bit of the, the problem with playing Frost tier 1. You easily lose a ton of map control. Simply because you lose the taste fight. Alright, Uwalu chooses to go tier 2, pure fire. Against pure frost, I guess, after a book. I went with the hard counter. So without a tier one lead, pure fire struggles in against tier one against tier two pure frost. And while this right now is a small tier one lead for fire, to be honest, it's still not enough. Okay, pure fire right now on three wells. Frost on two. You can either just take a close well, which he should. Most likely. Or we can try to just destroy the well. But yeah, because of the um the ice guardian, the ice barrier and the frostbite, he's a bit behind in energy. Sky of Templar. Forces this guy fire drag back. But yeah, your fire is ahead by well for 30 energy at this point, which is a ton.
<laughs> instantly erupts the war eagle. Nicely done. Yeah, he's really leveraging his small tier 1 lead right now. And has the one way up for quite some time now. Oh, well, low should feel content is it right now. The problem is when energy levels get higher, Pure Frost can easily force a well kick and heavily out trade by doing so. But the drag just gets shredded. Doesn't get him in the end, so the trade wasn't horrible overall. Wasn't a good one. After book finally takes away behind like AT energy. Wow, just gets two Skyfire Drakes right here. That's a big swing. The War Eagle, he'll, like, he has to heal up those units. Though, so it's not as big as an advantage as could have been. Ah, doesn't get the Ravage. Dodges the Cold Snap, very nicely done. This enables him to contest this, the Skyfire Drake's destruction. And even with two units hitting him, a frozen unit with Ravage just doesn't die. Yeah, this is some um, great use of what the fire has to attack. Uh, the Ravage gets wasted. That hurts. And once we get into a close to even position in tier 2, the pure frost just destroys. Because pure skyfire spam can't keep up. So Bobalo needs to find the tier 3 timing right now. Because, as you can see, the Beatrix can get easily zoned by Stormsinger. You basically only have Rabbit Skyfire to hold tier 2. Lava Field gets countered by Area Ice Shield. But the world is really low right now. He needs to repair that. There we go. We could use the gravity search ability here to get the war eagle involved. He really should. The split attack mountaineer coming in. Them going right is, is really hurting him right now. 
Because Bovado can simply pull back. But he... It's hard to micro right now. Double fire dance attack. So there's like 270 energy bound here. That's why this is crumbling hard. It was kind of slow to leverage this, but this will most likely be a well trade. Oh, very juicy war cry. That's an insane trade. And he gets a well here. The wildfire doesn't do a lot. And the area is should just offer so much HP here to simply kick the well. And he actually holds onto with this one because of the war eagle, just destroying the two stacked up fire dances. The Willow takes another well. So this sets him behind on the tier 3 curve by a lot. And I'm not sure he can hold on here. Oh, actually loses the Mountaineer. So close. Finally uses the Gravity Surge. Disenchant. That's a very expensive reaction, but probably worth it. Double Guy of Templar just goes through Ravage, which is another problem with upscale tier 2 interactions. So even though Afrobook was behind by a lot in the early game, the card interactions in tier 2 are just so much better for Pure Frost. I think I missed another well drop here. Yeah, the Mountaineer just took out another well. Yeah, the Bolo is trying for T3 right now, but I think he missed the semi. This is just too much. <laughs> he lost so many wells, he might even lose the monument game. There are three mountaineers on the field, and two after this one died. Monument is down without T3 even reached. Yeah, this seems like Bobalo will have to fight his way through the loser bracket and Afrobook can continue. Good game! What's hyper up to? Oh, Toggy is out against Sina. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah, Zaina is probably one of the stronger players you can face early on in the loser bracket.
Okay, we will have to wait a moment for Fodasa. Ah, Fodasa man seems to be taking his time. Which is alright. This is gonna be <laughs> a long tournament, so... Taking a break when you need it. What's his name? There we go.
All right. The Dessa man has appeared. Fire T1 against Shadow T1 on Wazai. Ducks are out already. It's hard for Shadow to move through the choke point against Fire, simply due to eruption, obviously. Fire, on the other hand, as long as Thux and Scavengers lead, you can't really nasty into that too efficiently. Thux obviously a very scary unit. They generate energy by dealing damage to a unit. So you can very quickly gain deceptively huge advantages. Winning a couple of trades here with the sides. Very nice. And Hyper's taking the moment to just move up. Sunstriders are winning at the side. That might be a nasty. Nice one. I also guess he dazed Sunstriders. This was a very big nasty. Even finishes off the scaff. It was beautiful. But this, the fight on the left didn't go so well, so... That's actually a lead for Podessa Man, I think. Oh no, it's a slight lead for, for Hyper. Now they just go at it, but for Dessa Man, he's one strong straight up from the back. And the fucks don't make it out of taste. Ah, uh, the second squad also gets nuked, but these are activated. But this is not something you can use to actually. Destroy the power well. I put a stock. They're even in an in, in, in score right now. But also even on units. So Hyper is straight up ahead one well. Which is a great lead at this point. Yeah, the, the thugs getting sniped here really didn't help. And now Hyper is on the offensive. Takes a second well though. It's good to have those two words together. So even if the other one takes tier 2, tier fire, you cannot cliff dance you as easily. Sandara trying to take out the power well. But frenzied for a second with Motivate, deal a ton of damage. Same time he's... He was attacking here. Yeah, not even an eruption range, so... Good hold by Hyper. Motivating his for a second up here. And now he's up a well. Again. So yeah, as you can see, this one has around 40 energy mind, and this one has around 60, so that's another 20 energy lead for Hyper. Dread charges. Plus this one, but right now he has to hold on. And the Fox actually getting into the Forsaken, generating a ton of value. So that's obviously something we cannot see, how much energy Fucks have looted so far. Shadow Frost here too coming in. For Hyper. But can you get that before Vodasa Man arrives at his power bear? I don't think so. A charger trying to body block.
I handed it to us through. Nice body blocking there. So does a man just going for a quick attack with the Sandra up here instead? While grabbing pure fire tattoo. He's still down a well though. Ah, the eruption, way too late. Hyper's still under a lot of pressure, but if he gets through this, he's up a well quite some time. So a nice thing here is, even though he can cliff dancer obviously, Hyper has a monument nearby, so he can just flank from the other side. Oh, he can actually shoot there. That's that's very very nice one. Has to ravage because of it. The mountaineer was spawned dazed, so the damage output isn't quite there. But the wildfire doesn't even kill the dark elf assassins. This is too much, I think, to hold this on. To hold onto this position. And the mountaineer isn't easy to deal with for pure fire. And for lesser man is down a well, down a tempo and taps out. Okay, we had a buck, I guess. I suppose I'm gonna restart the game. All right. Some time to time having to relog. I guess that's battle for it.
game too. One zero lead for Hyper so far. Shadow against Shadow. Early wave for Hyper. Put us a or put us suit. Yeah, both of them. The red charges out. So this is dazed, but we know there is two dot right here, so hyper falls back. Skeleton warriors are really strong in the, in the shadow mirror. With this, he could have most likely been able to rush the early well. I know energy for Nestia, I suppose. That would have been nice here. Yeah. But it's really hard to deal with them. You can't really kill them, so. It was good he got the early damage, so there's no nasty opportunity for Fodasa man using the skeleton warriors. Overall score is even, and for the summon is at 4 Forsaken, and Hyper is at 5, but that's a 4-man squad, so not really a lead to be honest. <laughs> they clash again. <laughs> uh, early damage on skeletons to deny any kind of nasty again. Now it's all about focus fire. Uh, they're both splitting their damage a bit, so... I pass a lot of units surviving. <laughs> For the summon really wants to make this work with his skeleton warriors. I don't think it's gonna happen though. If he uses the ability early. He's actually, it's very harder to get them out of nasty range, so maybe that could be what he goes for now. Oh, sorry. Yeah, this time we got the ability off pretty quickly. As you can see, they are actually at decent health. You might want to nest at this. He's going for the well, I suppose. Hyper oh. needs to nasty right now if he wants to live. Yeah, he does it. Very nice. Clutch hold. He should be aggressive right now because what Fodasa man wants to do is protect you too. Like 100%. Alright. He's aggressive so Fodasa man is forced to play units and that's exactly what he needs. This should be an SC. Oh, he doesn't have energy I guess. Ah, there we go. Fine hold. But Hyper didn't use three of his for a second, so. The well is still not repaired. As soon as he does this, he's no longer ahead in tempo. 
because of the huge energy cost to repair. He can't really nest it here because of those other units being nearby. And this is like mm, five forsaken against five, so it's not even it's not even favored exactly. But he can just go for the very focus. And if a Dasa man doesn't have energy for Nasty, he loses. Yeah, the Nasty was actually not that bad, considering how low HP this threat was. Well, that's enough to hold on. And Hyper, instead of repairing, goes for T2, which is a fine choice. Doesn't want to take the tempo hit. And worse, in the worst case, he can just build the wall here and buy some time. Okay, for Dustin Man decides to play along tier 1 and goes for another well. Interesting choice. Can be rough to hold on though on this map. You can just send the Nightcrawlers here. He should destroy the wall at this point. It's 50 bound power. It serves its purpose. Yeah, really nice hold here, actually. He said he doesn't get this one, but he holds back the aggressor. But using freeze and protects, Hyper manages to defend the T1 attack. If Fudasa can grab T2 right now, he's actually ahead by a good amount of energy, which is really nice to see. Yeah, the Deepar, the the wall was alive for too long. That threw him back a lot. He might have been able to destroy a well down here with more energy. Ah, not sure about that, Nasty. Okay, he, he gets the well. But there's already 45 energy gone for Fadasa, so... Hyper currently with a one well lead. I'm being aggressive trying to deny the well position, I suppose. There we go. Hyper keeps on belling up. And well, the next rare position for for is either those. Yeah, takes them. Okay. And instantly T3 from Hyper. So there's like a ton of energy bound here on T2 units, Rafa does and I, and T1 even. So going T3 himself would be way later. Especially since he just took like a fifth power away. So this is a very strong T3 timing, and for Dasa man needs to make something happen with this. He has way more energy bound than units than T2. So yeah, this was a nice decision by Hepper. Very nicely done. Time is one. It's really, really efficient against T2, especially split attacks. And he really doesn't have trouble holding on here. No T3 on the way for Hudasan Man since he decided to try to push. But time is one. Just denies the aggression completely. Oh, 
Yeah, so far Nightcrawlers have been able to defend. And this is something he has to deal with somehow, because they can frenzy as soon as they are unfrozen. Oh, he doesn't. Alright. There we go. Motivated frenzy Nightcrawlers actually deal insane amounts of damage. But he was a bit late on that. But Tremor is nothing you can deal with with Nightcrawlers only. But they're gonna be wells dropping soon. Like, considering the increase damage reduction, this is like 4.5k HP. Gets the Phoenix. But life beef tremor just. Yeah, it's insanely tanky, and the damage spread from life weaving itself should be enough to destroy the well for the creation. Not that also mine has been up a well for quite some time, I actually paid off. But I don't see him dealing with the 2 free pressure for long, even though this. This went way better than I expected. Oh, night crawlers just cleaning up the tremor. This way was destroyed, but it's okay. Nice wall here. Completely delays this attack. And he actually has energy for tier 3. I didn't expect him to hold on for so long. It's very nice. Nicely done. He could use the wall the wallbox right now to survive, but I don't think he knows about it. He can just open and close the gate and the other one can cover it. So yeah, if he can survive this part... Ah, oh, he can. He was one shield building away from being back in the game. GG and Hyper takes it to zero. Nice games. My cat demands attention. Moment. All right, let's see if there are any games for us to sh to look into.
Where else is up here at? All right, guess the ready critics is going to watch that. Oh, where's Blueberry Boy at?
Und Here we go, the game. As far as I know, it's zero zero right now. Draken against Blueberry Boy. All right, here we go. Master Archer, Master Archer. Yes. and Blatterus. Blueberry boy with the rusty one. You can spawn Ice Guardians, because their shield is determined by their distance too well, so it's not linked to the taste mechanic. But there are still not enough units out here to really defend the Master Archer. So Draken immediately jumps onto that. Make some great trades here. Pulls back his stretch archers so they don't get hit by the ice guardians. And the dazed master archers lose some squads here. Motivate on the Nox units. But no micro on the, on the Nox units, so they actually got massacred by the ice guardians. Forty two HP Nox unit gets finished off. And now we have let's say two squads of Master Archers against three Nox units. If he can't quickly take care of the stretch charger. This thing is gonna come out of days and really be a trouble. Be trouble. Yeah, good good spawn of Ice Guidance. Maybe he can nuke this stretch charger out of days. Quickly pull some back. Yeah, Dragon seems to be getting ahead here. And once you lose this position, it's really hard to defend your power wells. Master Archers reporting. Master Archers here. Yeah, as Guardians will take ages to get to Nox units right here. A dragon just going straight for the well focus with the Nox units. Pretty late shell, but should be enough HP to make value out of it. This is at least three Nox troopers here, by the way. There we go. Just a flash wound, exactly. I mean, he has a lot of units now. 
who needs those power words anyways. Ah, uh, guess the repairing. That was close. And he should be able to hold on here. Even the monument helping out. But the knocks in the high ground are obviously hard to contest. But he gets his, his shots in. If only there wasn't this difficult topic of losing a power where he would be in a good spot. Yeah, very, very good reaction by Draken, obviously, taking T2 up when your opponent has a massive amounts of energy bound in T1. He pulls out the Nox units so he can re-engage once he has to contest. Was my right with the two cards. That's good play here. He's actually going for the power. Well. <laughs> Very good decision making. Forces units here. Pulling out the river, I guess. No. But yeah, this is not enough DPS to get through Frost Protects or even take out a monument. <laughs> Dragon just takes over, I like it. Pure Frost by Blueberry Boy. But sadly, there goes the next power. This is a nice spot, but that will not lead to much. Even though taking out a squad of Dark Elf Assassins with tier 1 units is always a nice trade. Oh, yeah, very nice. Actually takes out the Dazed Reaver with the Frostbite Scream. That was nice then. Let's just not mention this area. Night Guard ready to take over the War Eagle. Yeah, Draken just keeps on welling up, keeping his two wells advantage. A three wells actually at this point. Snipes the night guard. And the master archers are getting work done. But a free words advantage is a free words advantage, so good luck. Nice freeze here, but mm, let's see. He really does not have anything in place to counter besides the night guard. But the night guard gets in, and the war eagle can deal with this easily. Maybe he can make the night guard survive until he can swap again. Dodges the scream with everything but the master archers. Very nice. Yeah, this is some decent micro at tier 2, for sure. Even gets the War Eagle back. Sadly, Draken is, on, is nearly done with his tier 3 orb. I am timeless.
Oh yeah, the uh, tier one went horrible, but there were some nice moves at tier two. It's gonna be nasty, isn't it? Yeah. There we go. Good game. Ready doesn't have sound, really? Sound some valuable information. I mean, what do you need um, besides his voice? Power. Let's be real here. It's all about the voice. All right, Yumiya. This is a better map for Frosty One, that's for sure. And some power by Draken. The close by distance makes it way easier for Frost to defend against Swift spams. Dragon still goes for a multi prong attack here. Bossing out Ice Guardians that can't really do anything besides defend. Yeah, that's how you abuse Frost tier 1. Just snipe out a Master Hunter and run. Trying to frostbite him. But that's no DPS at all. Yeah, so he invested 120 energy, got 170 in tier 1 from Blueberry Boy, and went tier 2. That's decently well done, baiting out energy. Not like Blueberry had any other choice but to react. But it's pure, pure frost again against Shadow Frost. So Draken with less energy bound in units I could just try to get a rallied. But so far Blueberry is able to keep up. He might want to kill the squad though. Really no point of it surviving. So yeah, we are going into a heavy well phase and there we go Draken with uh, another well.
one way lead for Draken for quite some time at this point. Uh, the 150 power compared to the 60 bound results in a few quicker wealths for Draken. At this point they're at like 7 base well bases, so this is going to go to tier 3 for sure. Blueberry going for the attack. But Draken gets the 2 tier 3 before Blueberry can block it. This was a nice try. But right now he has like what another 80 energy investor. My Draken has done nothing but spam rats. Okay, he's going for the monument kick. I'm not sure about that against shield building, you really want multiple targets. Oh my god, he actually gets a mad land. That's amazing, I like it. Break investing into Aura instead of Protects did not pay off here. Yeah, he used the unit here to move T3 and he's blocking T3 here. So Draken moves for the middle for T3 spot. Maybe he should have been able to keep up pressure T2, I'm not sure. But he was certainly in a decent spot for this. And the one iceberg here forced Draken to go in the middle. So, 100 energy lead for a blueberry by destroying a monument, that's nice. Draken just swelling up. Taking another one here in the middle. Blueberry has a lot of bound power in tier 2, but Draken has too, so it's not as bad as it was before. And a Witcher, I like it. On a close map like this one, you can do a lot of work with Witcher range. Especially if you actually run buildings compared to other Witcher players we saw today. And I need the Ice Barrier here or he will just... Yeah. Not empowered right now, so deals less damage and has less range. Dragon going in the offensive while having a way more as a risky choice. Like this will give a huge tempo advantage to Blueberry. And once this is done, I'm not sure Draken can hold on. The Witcher will cliff this monument. There's already servants in this base. This gets deflected. This is also looking great. Yeah, I think this is a lot of tempo advantage for, for, for Blueberry. Oh, actually freezes before ability, that's great. just really needs to get into the offensive right now with all this stuff. Oh, he's moving to the middle. That's so sad. He could have cliffed here with the original. That would have been amazing. But he can freeze those units, so the... Ah, the wicked areas. Alright. The well is here very low, and this one is also low too, so he could attack both. Which is, he, which is what he's doing right now. Cube building is off cooldown. I guess it's, it's burned. Nasty wood kick. Does he have it? Is it in range? Too late. So yeah, Draken is a well up, and he's somewhat defending. So far, we could put the visitor up here so even gravity search will not 
deny her. But the Virgil is just DPSing so nice right now. Oh, dazed Ashbone. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah. But we're getting where you are. This is a massive attack. Oh, uh, missed the freeze timing here. So nothing is frozen. Besides the tower. But which are getting so much done here. And this will not kill her. Well, let's hope Blueberry has shoot building himself or this world is done for. Yeah, he yeah, has, okay. I'm not sure why it's a, why it's lagging from time to time. Kinda oh, nasty, isn't it? Wow. Also got this one. That's a lot of fire kicks. Tremor really paying off. Who would bear the whips and Barely doesn't get the monument. Didn't work. Oh god, he played another one, so nice they're sufficient. So yeah, four worlds for Blueberry and eight worlds for Draken. That's a problem. But if he can take out this monument, he can deny a tier 3 for Draken, and this should actually be winnable at that point. But he needs to make it happen right now. Also, he should attack right here at the same point. So yeah, he's just spreading his damage a lot because he's taking the buildings and the units at the same time. So he's not really winning the, the unit trades like he could with the Ash Bombs. But also doesn't get enough DPS into the buildings because the units are blocking. So that's the problem with Ash Bomb. That's the cone of attack he has. So you really need to play around that. For example, moving the Ash Bomb to the right right now would allow him to only attack the Silver Wind. I'm not sure what's motivated right now. The tremor. The tremor is alright. That's nasty. Ah, oh, motivate ability. Takes out the monument. And Dragon cleaned up this one nicely. Yeah, this seems... I mean, he has another tier, tier 3 spot here. But he leaves. Alright. Yeah, he had um, opportunities to win there in the early tier 3 for sure. But Dragon played the tier 1 well and tier 2 and um, knew how to take advantage of Frost tier 1. But in the end, I think Dragon had a better execution for tier 3. Nicely done.
Well, let's see if we can find another game. I'm gonna have to go off soon, though. I guess Nick Bobolo is going on, sure. Yeah, they are playing already. All right. Right, wasn't tracking German. All right, find out Draken, very nice. Okay. We continue on our dragon trip. Let's see how he fares against John Cena, the one and only. This time he has taken the path of the fuck, a fire T1 player, a man of culture, a man of 60 energy units. Fucks. 
But Tina might be able to snipe them with the Frenzy. There we go. They're not getting out of days. There's so much looting going on that John Cena might be able to hold the middle while having an energy disadvantage. Oh, this is getting close. But with Fox coming out of days, I think Fox can take it. That's so much energy looted. What a fucking victory. Nice block here. Get some more looting in by blocking with the Sunstriders. It's important to loot. I mean, that's why you're playing fuck T1, right? Alright, this is a pretty big lead for Draken. Even well situation though. Draken has spent 50 energy more. But has around 230 energy in units and John Cena only has a Dread Charger. So Draken might want to be a bit more aggressive here. He's trying to block the, the second well position, which is a nice idea. As other units are just a bit far off right now. And as such as Cena can get some decent trades in here. Maybe Nasty? Yeah, Nasty. Alright. It's just not that effective against Fox. But overall, I think, because those units were so far away, John Cena is able to get his tempo advantage in here, even though he's like down too well at this point. So yeah, like in a normal situation, this would have been a position for Cena to push, but the Fox might have just generated so much energy at this point, which is really hard to tell for me right now, but I will assume it's a lot, because otherwise you could not be two ways up here and hope to defend. Thanks, good. Yes. He's in kiting by John Cena. Very nice. And he's a lot of units out right now. And the fucks really aren't getting value. He should be able to, to get into a well here. Ah, uh, the squad here is missing out. Alright. Pulling back the dazed one so it doesn't get sniped. Ah, stopping. Ah, oh, he, he stopped. And the fox and the sun striders got to him. Yeah, keep in mind all this is happening with two worlds difference. Which is insane. <laughs> For a tier 1 situation. He gets the first click in, and yeah, he cuts back far enough. Very nice for them to get out of days. Oh, this is... Uh, yeah, it's hard to keep up the eruption split, but you have to. Oh, this happens. That was such a nice eruption. Oh, he got too close to the world, so Fox are pretty much on top of him at the start. Yeah, like, he's going to 2 right now. But this is 2 worlds down and probably even more than a well in energy generated by the thugs themselves. So this is really looking great for Draken.
Daphne tries to counter here. But at this point, Draken is tier 2. And even if he gets something done here, he's he's down to wealth, so Draken has some leeway on how much he can lose. Oh, gets the Gladiatrix, that's nice. Sunstriders actually just pure DPSing. The wildfire is just hitting the harvester. There we go. Rip. Oh no, the harvester, yeah. I tried. Okay, round two. John Cena against Draken. This time on Halador. This time Draken opts for the Shadow T1 instead of the Thug T1. Very well by both. These wells are really hard to rush because of the drop points. And they are far distance from the opponent. So you can even take them in Shadow Mirrors. And if you opt for this well, you give up a bit of power because it's way later than this one. Ah, Draken with the Skeleton Warrior pick. It's a really strong card in the Shadow Mirror. Especially if you chose to rush wells. Blazing Fox for me, the picture is working perfectly fine, so it's on your end. Dragon winning out the T1 fight here. Yeah. 
opting for another way against the tattoo from John Cena. Yeah, Blazing Fox, like, try refreshing, try Control F5 if you have trouble, or swap the browser, because I can guarantee you it's not on my end. Ah, uh, you dazed Shadow Mage. Played it too quickly. And Dragon wants to jump on that. Shadow Mage. Okay, second Shadow Mage for the rescue. So yeah, Draken got like 25 more power out of this well than Francina did, and also C2, so nice way to get the lead. Just another power well here, and Francina's is a bit later, because he has more units out, usually. Yeah, Draken consistently going for the one uh, more. Okay, Nightcrawler with the full damage nesting. So much damage, it's insane. You really have to damage the Nightcrawler. Because the ability from the Shadow Mage deals even more damage than normal nesty, so. This was what, 900 damage to the power well? Uh, a little, little less. 740. But behind this, John Cena is already behind one well. He has to make something happen here. The Phoenix might come back because of each other. Nice. But the Nightcrawler is already halfway done. Oh, the Reaver actually sucked up all the, the corpses, so the corpse explosion didn't do anything. I'm not sure if this was intended, but it was great. Assassin's waiting to die. Assassin's waiting. <laughs> <laughs> After the other, yeah. At this point, Draken has like, a well lead and a uh, tempo lead. So, unless there's like an aura of corruption to Harvester here, you this is over. <laughs> Oh, I actually got sent to fight each other, that's nice. Nicely done. Gets two reverse for free. Doesn't finish them off with the nasty, so. A lot of well damage done, but that's nothing that sticks against the Frost Flash. Yeah, double check end time. What do you wish of the Shadow? Assassin's waiting to die. Knockback saves the squad for a moment longer, but here we burn.
<laughs> and John leaves. A lot of corpse explodes. And the Shadow Mage Nasty was nice on the Night Trawler. But Drake can snowboard pretty decently. And takes the series 2 to 0. Nice. All right, let's see if we can get another match going. Okay, Nick against Impossible. Shadow Mirror, both players opt to destroy the world. It's a bit more power you gain and there isn't really a defensive advantage when using walls because Forsaken can just attack through walls to get the power walls. It's only It only blocks your own nasty. Instant T2 by Nick. Wow. Alright. That's a choice. So the problem for Nick here is if his Dachada dies <laughs> you can you can actually wall him in. Okay, he survived long enough. And the T2 went through and he has a slight advantage. Considering impossible has invested in two forsaken. That's Shadow Nature against Shadow Frost. That's an exciting matchup for sure. Shadow Nature has the edge when played properly. But it's very hard to do, so let's see how it goes. The doppel frenzy should reflect the aggression here. He should have yeah. Plus one frenzy actually. That was pretty well done. Just actually takes out two units here. Losing one squad off for a second. Instantly takes the power well out of that small advantage. Offensive way by Nick, interesting. The um, army phantom obviously blocks range attacks as soon as she attacks something in melee. And this is paying off right now. Took out a dark elf assassin, took out a storm singer. And if he micros correctly, he's gonna block this too. Yeah, that's so nasty to deal with. I love it. Yeah, he should be playing those up here. Like, if you just play them in melee range next to Army Phantom, this is gonna happen, right? <laughs> but if you have a bit more distance, you can take out the Army Phantom with Storm Singers. So yeah, Impossible has a big unit lead right now and Shadow Nature is great at snowballing this due to the cheap nature cc and the healing option and i'm not sure if nick can come back from this this is 60 power against 45 this is 50 power for nothing we should really be using the spawn point here You know, he needs to repair. He doesn't. Yeah. That's rough.
This is very stacked up, so nasty all three. It's kind of effective. There we go. I actually managed to split off the angry phantom. Helps a lot. And the angry phantom makes it hard for him to like play dark assassins right now. Ah, I actually gets yoink. Nice. So yeah, he cannot really capitalize on the freeze right now. Impossible upper well. Just a steady stream of units. There we go, a nice heal. And Nick taps out. That's one zero for impossible. <laughs> Absolutely correct. We had a great Lost Souls Mirror before light where we had um I think Nick against Gurkha. And they were both just massing wilds into tier 3. And we had uh, 18 minutes Grigori spam fest. It was amazing. The pinnacle of gameplay. All right, impossible. Back to fire, Timon. Nick sticking to shadow, most likely shadow frost. Searching for that tier two off. I see. There we go. <laughs> what a quick, quick scotch of should, should stop this because he, she needs to destroy. Oh, he didn't destroy. Oh god, that's uh, it's painful. Like when you when you destroy a monument yourself, you don't get the rubble around it. But he didn't, so there is rubble. This means he lost uh, one hundred pounds. And this seems a bit, um, <laughs> a bit tilted gameplay, I guess. <laughs> but there's no scorched job, that's nice. So oh, there we go. Dread chargers ready. This is gonna be tough to hold. No cancel again. That's 200 power behind. Yeah, impossible really getting value out of that Scorched Earth here. We it's nasty. But he plays for second instead. Okay. Yeah, that's a 300 power disadvantage. That's a lot. Here we go, some fucks. 
finally. Possible immediately jumping on the next tier two attempt by Nick and going for the scorch. Putting fucks up to counter to immediately um, go for the main base. I think he is not expecting to kick this monument, that's why he's chosen to do this. <laughs> Straight going for the off. I love it. By delaying this one. Yeah, there we go. This was over a long time ago. Yeah, congratulations, impossible. For winning. But hey. I guess we must be Nick against Bubalo, where Nick actually won, which is really nice. Okay, I need to find out how Dreadicure is casting now, so one moment.
Okay. Yeah, I think I can stream like one more game and I'm gonna have to head off. Yeah, honestly, if I'm not finding anything right now, I'm just gonna go offline right now. I have to go in like 10 minutes anyways, so... Yeah, I think I have to stop right now. Unless Afro and Draken are ready to go right now. Um, the Draken train should continue, I guess. Okay, I guess we can watch um, PK Gurke against Vodasa Man. All right, I'm going to reset the stream. One second. <laughs> 